we're right on the edge of feedback, but it's MAPS Season 2, Episode 2. Uh, under the name Zippers. We'll see what happens.
Check, check. Hello. Hello, everyone. Here I am.
Okay. Uh, well, we were just, I don't know, in some kind of uh, ice palace from Zelda or something like that. Um, yeah, okay, so I guess we'll walk quickly through, um, through everything that was going on. Um, so, I mean, the, the origin of the name Zippers, uh, it's, it's kind of a funny thing. Uh, Sam Bolling, who's kind of helped a bit on the, on the Crow firmware and a bunch of other, um, monome firmware projects, um, they were talking about really enjoying, uh, the sound of zipper noise, like, wh which is when you have, like, a, an analog to digital or digital to analog conversion, and you have a signal going from one, one place to another, and you hear these discrete steps because you don't have enough granularity to get to everything. Uh, so the idea is to use the, the output scale quantization system uh, from Crow to basically use that to the effect of writing melodies by describing uh, uh, contours, I guess is how I would call it, um, which I kind of got to in the end there. A lot of reverb on the vocal mic. Really? Hmm. Okay, someone can hear me fine, great. Uh, everything looks fine on my end, so we'll see. Um, so, uh, before we get to that, which is kind of what I want to talk about mostly for this session, um, kind of the, a lot of the kind of rhythmic structures and stuff were kind of very similar to the, the previous episode. So um, this idea of having a, uh, a clock routine, so basically a, a cycling, um, a function that gets called in time uh, repeatedly. And I was using that to kind of, uh, to play the bass notes. Um, so the idea was there was a, uh, this originally here was the rhythm of the bass notes. Um, I think I changed it toward the end. Uh, and then the notes were here. So it's a little uh, convoluted to read them like this, but basically it's a, a G, a G, and a B flat. Um, where we're talking in semitones and zero is C. Oh, um, yeah, so, I mean, a lot of this stuff I think I will get, I'd love to kind of keep working on it and uh, make it feel a little more natural and like you don't have to do this like arithmetic on the fly of like figuring out what note is what number. Um, but, you know, I digress. Uh, I've gotten in the habit of, I didn't use it today, but the idea of, um, when you do this, uh, this, this clock run process, like the, the these kind of structures, um, the idea of, you know, it wants to, you want to run it forever. Um, so you make a clock routine and you put a, a while true loop in, which basically means this will never finish. Um, but it will call this function. And because this function is, uh, it's a clock, like it happens in time, it means that there's like an arbitrary delay in this function, which should, there should be, otherwise it'll crash crow. <laughs> um, but I've been trying to keep them as separate functions uh, with the reason that then they're much easier to replace on the fly. Uh, I didn't do that today uh, because I was trying to do too many things, you know, but uh, that's, the, that's the idea behind it. So we, we basically, in each case, we delay for some amount of time and then we call the event, which in this case was a strum, which, yeah. So basically every time we want an event, we call into this function and it gives us, it actually creates another sub clock routine. So you have a clock within a clock um, so that you can kind of sequence when the event happens, but then you can still sequence a, like a strumming through notes, uh, like you're playing a, an omnichord or something. So this would kind of dynamically change uh, how many notes it would strum. Um, and it would do it every quarter of a beat. And basically, we're, I was using the, the width synthesizer to play, which is this guy hiding in here, the middle width. 
Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, the two chords, I, I was just looking for some kind of inspiration. Originally, I was doing a much more complicated uh, chord structure, but I very quickly was getting lost or unable to actually get through everything. So here we are. Um, but that's the idea. We're using this, the, the sequence library to kind of dynamically give us a new value each time we call it. Um, so we can kind of, uh, have structure going through, um, this particular, this structure here is, I think, kind of interesting, uh, where I'm defining a scale. I'm saving it as a raw table, and I'm doing that specifically so I can use it with the output scales. Um, but I plug that into a sequence and then apply the step three um, modifier to it. And what that does is basically it gives it gives you every third, like it counts three every time. So it'll give you the root note, then the fourth, then the ninth, uh, etc. Um, in musical terms, is that right? One, four. Anyway, something like this. It, it, it gives you these more like suspended chord sounds. It's like less major minor and more uh, kind of open and ambiguous, which is kind of what I was trying to go for here. Um, yeah, so basically everything starts up and then in the end I introduce this function, uh, which is playing the melody. And this is where the, the kind of zipper idea came in. Um, I use this name Zig, it was a, it's a, it's halfway to zigzag. It, what I'm trying, what I want to do is figure out how to write more complex um, melody shapes. Um, but I didn't quite get there with this performance. I think um, maybe we'll get there in the second half of the episode. Um, but yeah, basically it would just call a function that would um, open, like basically output two is mapped to the volume of this uh, mangrove oscillator here, which is playing the melody. Um, so it will have a, a short attack and then it'll decay over 10 seconds. And the idea is you'll be re-triggering it before that 10 seconds is complete. So the, the sound never really dies out completely. Instead you have uh, this like sequential building um, or, or just like a, a kind of uh, a give and take with the, with the volume. And then output one, eventually I, I just end up uh, doing this method call. So what this does is basically whatever action is assigned to output one, it will call it. Um, so that's what I was doing in Druid over here is I was kind of dynamically reassigning what, uh, what that action was. So um, originally it was just like a slope up and a slope down. Um, and eventually I, I, I basically did the exact same thing, but introduced a couple of these dynamic, uh, dynamic variables. And, and what that allowed me to do was kind of change the, the active points of the scale of the zipper. Um, and they were also using the, the new, uh, step, um, dynamic constructs. Basically it means you can, have a number modify itself every time it's accessed, uh, which is kind of similar to how sequence works. Instead of giving you the next value in a sequence, it will perform some arithmetic operation. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, that's the loose run through. Um, so I think what I'm gonna try and do is we'll, we'll break it back down so we can make it, um, something a bit more uh, digestible, something simple. Um, we'll try and do like a, a zipper melody and then see if we don't uh, create some kind of uh, interesting sound out of that. So uh, I'm just gonna repatch a couple things so we can get some, some delay on this, on the oscillator. <laughs> I, wow, okay. <laughs> All right. 
So let's see what we what we have here. Alright, so, um, I guess, I guess we can get started on it. Um, it'd be nice to have some motion, so it's a little interesting. Okay, um, yeah, cool. How are we going for time? All right, it's five o'clock even, nice. Okay, so, um, if we start out uh, with just, we're using output one uh, for reference to control the mangrove's pitch. So if I just, I've set the slew to one second so now if I say, if I just tell it to go to one volt, it'll take one second to slide there. How's the volume on your end? Oh yeah, potentially, I think all these times might be off by a second, uh, by, by a factor two. <laughs> uh, I believe I broke something. So yeah, good, good catch, quantum space. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, you heard it just like slewed over a second. It's a little, uh, over two seconds. Um, so, you know, it moves around. It's, uh, that's fine. You don't hear the zipper noise because it's a nice, uh, Crow has really nice digital to analog converters, so it's a very smooth transition. Um, I'm going to turn down the level of the delay, but I'll keep it up. And, um... Okay, uh, so what we can do... We can introduce the uh, the scale operation. Um, I'll start with just uh, chromatic, and this is a there's a shortcut where if you just say scale and, and call it, it'll give you chromatic twelve tone. Um,
Which is the same thing as saying uh, a table of the chromatic notes. Okay, so that works. It's like not super exciting, but uh, let's use um, the good old major pentatonic. So this is nice. Um, you can go over two octaves like this. You can go a long way. Super bass. I can't even hear that. Uh. Cool stuff. So it's nice, but I think typically with melodies, um, typically you want to have... Uh, this really needs to be like triggering the envelope too, right? Sorry. Short digression. Gonna do that same trick of like having a really long decay, so it takes a long, it takes a really long time to fade out, and we'll just proceed it like this. destroyed the output table, so we have to reset. <laughs> Nevertheless, we will get there again. You know what we're gonna do? I'm just putting this into a function so we don't have to worry about uh, resetting all the time. So we should now be able to say output one volt, and we can proceed that with a call to two to yeah. Basically, well, we could like take that little thing we've been writing again and again and uh, give it a name. Um, so, this is very dumb, but here we are. I'll put one volts equals B. Naming is the hardest thing in computers. Okay, so there we go. We have like our like output scaling thing. You know, you can use this to just do quantization. Um, that's one solution. Uh, 
I think that's that's the original reason why I, like why I came up with it. Um, but I think this use case is really interesting, and what I'd really like to try and do is kind of maybe try and describe some melodies. Right? So the two chords that I was using in the performance, uh, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but uh, they were. Um, They're both taken from the the first two chords of Blue and Green by uh, Bill Evans slash maybe Miles Davis, but probably not. Um, can I just do this? To download it. Yeah, I'm gonna try and pull it up into the into the chat. Image. Okay. Alright, um, so this is not, I mean, strictly we weren't using the whole thing, but um, this idea of the, the B flat major 7 with the, the sharp 11, which makes it like a Lydian scale, and then this says A7 sharp 9, but I think it's meant to be an A7 augmented, but I mean, sharp 9 is, I don't know, the, uh, the real book uh, transcriptions are always kind of wacky. So here we are. Hopefully we don't get the, uh, the old DMCA for posting this on here, <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, what I'm thinking though is in, uh, in music transcripts, very often, like you can look at the notes and you, you see them as like, a. You see them as like a, a, a contour, you know, as a, as a shape. So, like when I, when I look at the blue and green melody, like you, you see it as being like a, a slow descending line um, all the way from this E at the top down to this F in the bass, but then it jumps back up very quickly to the D. And then you have this like nice little run in here, like this chromatic thing on the next, in the next passage. And I think this kind of thing is, is almost, would be very interesting to describe in terms of uh, contour rather than in terms of notes and scale tones. Um, and the concept is that, you know, as you, you set up this like contour that plays over a long period of time, but then as it's playing, you can in real time, you can update the scale that it's being quantized to. So you can maintain the shape of your melody, but you can change, you can like uh, asynchronously change the, you can uh, change the, the chords and change the harmonization. So let's, we're gonna try, I'm gonna try and build um, a melody and maybe we'll use this as an example, uh, cause it's actually really simple. <laughs> um, at least the way I'm, I'm looking at it right now. So let's make a new function, which is going to be the, the big melody, blue and green. <laughs> and it's just going to play it. It's going to create, uh, it's going to make that all happen. So we'll start it the same way. We'll open the, open the envelope. Um, and then I'm just going to create Create a sequence of notes as uh, voltages with slew times. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump up to like let's say one octave up um, instantaneously. So we with this this two function this is this is all part of ASL, um, which you know it's it's, it's really just about chaining together um, sequences of these like voltage slopes. Um, so you can kind of create gradients, risings and fallings, right? So it just takes two parts. You have the, the voltage you want to go to and then you have the amount of seconds you want to take to get there. Uh, so we'll start with instantaneously jumping to one volt and then we'll just slide down. I'm going to treat each bar as like one, 
one count in the it'll they'll, they'll actually be two seconds each but you'll get there so we're gonna go to let's just say we'll go down to zero over over three and we're gonna jump up to almost that first voltage um, over a very short period of time something like So we have this, this shape here, and then we're gonna, well, why don't we let it repeat? actually a little bit of a sustain here so we could like slide that instantly and then uh, wait um, but what I'm going to try and do instead uh, in order to get to exactly four counts um, is we'll set it to one but we can apply this kind of extra um, shaping and there's a number of options uh, what we want to do is logarithmic so it's gonna go very quickly at first but then never quite get to where it needs to go something like where's something something along these ways so then we'll say um, there's line two uh, and I'll bring it back momentarily great so we're going to say we're gonna instantly jump down a little bit so Minus 0.2 and 0, we'll kind of jump there. And then I want to bend down to minus 0.5 in, in half a count. And then we're going to jump all the way up to, let's say, 0 0.5 over the next half. And then again, it's a descending, a descending pattern. I think well, we want to go a bit higher than 0.7, let's say 0.5, 0.7, cool. So then we'll slide down to that same zero point over two bars. <laughs> okay, unfortunately this is only three bars, but let's just, let's see what it sounds like. So there's only three more bars, let's just go for it. Cool. So again, we kind of jump instantly up. So let's go to, what do we call C? Uh, 0 0.7. Instantly. This is nice, so it has a, like a rising, falling, descending, ascending, descending pattern. So why don't, I'm trying to think if there's like a more, if there's a fun way to do this. Uh, but in this moment I can't 
think of one. Let's just... We'll do them as like uh, couples. So we'll go the instant jump and then the, the fall. So we start at 0.7, then we want to fall down to 0.1 over 1. Then we jump up to a little lower, 0.6. And then we move down to 0.4. Finally, we jump up to let's say 1.2 and then fall down to 8. <laughs> All right. Okay, so this is interesting. This is a problem I haven't uh, encountered before. Basically, the way that ASL works is uh, there's... Because it now happens um, at a really low layer so that it can operate very efficiently, um, we have to kind of allocate a bunch of memory for it to work in, but this, this particular structure is too much for it. So we have to maybe rethink the way we're approaching this. really sure what that would be. Um, realistically, you probably don't want to do a whole composition like this. Um, I think what makes a lot more sense is to kind of trigger... Um, it's, it's still a nice though. I think it makes more sense to trigger kind of chunks of these melodies from a clock routine. ASL duration. So I think if you want to synchronize the ASL stuff with anything else, the way to do that is to drive ASL from your clock base. It's more of a, it's something that can be synced rather than a sync source. Sync source, that makes more sense. Okay, uh, I'm going to turn, turn this off and instead let's, uh, let's try and maybe capture this into a different format. I think one thing we can try here is um, we can just, I've just taken that exact same structure we just created um, and it's just now raw Lua tables. So what I think we can do, ooh, it could even be a sequence, that would be fun. Yeah, let's do it. The goal here is we're going to try and create the same thing, but with a different technique. So we'll still use this like output scale as the way to turn a, a gradient into a melody, um, but we're going to time it instead with a, a clock routine. So this is the same kind of pattern you've been seeing a lot if you've been watching these uh, these map sessions, um, this clock run function. It's very non-centric, I guess. Um, so what we want to do is we say while true do, this is going to give us again an infinite loop in time. And we know we want to use this thing called stages, like we have to figure out how to use it though. So, single stage out of stages and the way 
the way sequence works by default is it's going to give us each one of these tables sequentially. So what we can do with that is... do a few things. So we want to set the output slew time to be equal to the second element. Uh, yeah, the second element. And we want to go to the first element. But the trick here is we still need to wait. Um, and the time we're going to wait is going to be the same thing as the slew time. And I think that, that might do it. We have to divide the slew by two. and I'm working on something and I'm like, wait, does, does this support the concept? Yeah, sure. Okay, so... We can say if stage three. This is basically testing if there is a third element to our table. So if there is a stage three, we can use it to... shaping. Otherwise, we're just going to set it to linear. So this is great, but why don't we introduce should work with a clock sync as well. So why don't we try that so we can make it kind of tempo sensitive. I guess this will break the, the slew times, but we'll get through. Seems a bit quick. thing we can do here is because we're just taking that voltage number we can and we know we're going to stay in key we can like stretch and shrink our uh, our melody so i'm going to call this add a variable called stretch
of a sudden we have we have like a, sh a shape of a melody um, but we now have like control over this sense of uh, how uh, what, what's the word for that um, how angular or how kind of dynamic the, uh, the whole thing is another thing we can do is happening after the stretch, so it becomes like a, a transpose. I 
not that it's more of a lookup table, it's that it's a quantizer that you can break. It's a quantizer that like gives you extra. It doesn't have anything that a quantizer doesn't. It's like a quantizer plus. So yeah. But I mean, this is really beautiful. Okay, but we're going to change the scale entirely, right? Um, I feel like whenever I do these, I always lean on the same handful of scales, but we'll just use a diminished uh, arpeggio, diminished sound. Change it back because seeing as we're in C, it would diminish that would make the most sense would be to do like a half
but the way we've coded this is it's very like uh, all the data is in on top of itself. So why don't we pull out these scales?
right, so we've... We've gone somewhere. It's, uh... It's definitely not blue and green. But it's certainly inspired by it. Try something totally different. How about that? All right, this is yeah, certainly in some interesting territory. Um, so let's stick some shapes together. So, uh, what I'm going to try and do is rather than explicitly saying there's this ramp and then that one and then this and, and breaking it down like that, what if we define some smaller chunks and then figure out how to stack them together? Um, and what I, one thing I want to try and do with it is... Um, potentially use like a uh, one of the new ASL dynamics to like show how we can uh, interact with it on the fly. So what is that going to look like? I don't need the slew. Um, so we're going to try and set the action of number one. Uh, how do we want to do this? Why don't we do something like more fun and interesting, which is we can do a sorry, we're figuring this out along with you. Um, we're going to make a loop, so this output is going to play on a cycle. Um, and this is actually, I guess we can do something similar to what uh, was in the, in the kind of performance part, where we can have a, we can instantly jump back to, the, to zero volts, which is kind of our, our C note, our, well, whatever that like central tone is. Um, and then we'll go to one volt in one second. Let's just make sure this works. Thank you. 
So this is nice, but what if we want to... We can change the shape of the melody dynamically. So let's give the height of the melody a name. We're going to call it, uh, we're going to call it height. And we can refer to it like this. We can change it to, uh, on the fly. So here we're going a little bit higher up. step. And what this is going to do is every time, every time it cycles, it's going to go a little bit higher. So why don't we start really low? So basically this step is, on every, every time this line is called, uh, this step modifier is adding the value of 0 0.1 onto the current value of height. So you hear it gets bigger and bigger constantly. Um, we can change it. We can instantly set it back to minus 1. but it's also, it's pretty, like, standard or something. Um, why don't we try multiplying it? This will grow much more, it'll grow slowly and then quickly. So what I've just added here is um, I've given the time of this ramp a name. I call it time. Uh, and you give it a, a default value, but this means I can change it on the fly without having to reload. So let's try changing that. Thank you. 
Yeah, rad. Alright, so we have like some lasers. Perfect. Some very strange sounds, some fun, some fun lasers, some fun, interesting melodies. Um, but I really think there's a lot of uh, room to explore here. You know, I've I kind of just kind of touched on a few ideas in terms of dynamically defining melodies, defining melodies with uh, you know self-modifying elements like these step and mull parameters. Um, but I really I think you could um could really kind of take this in an interesting direction and I'm looking forward to spending some more time with it, you know, to uh, hopefully make some music using this stuff. Um, but I think we might, we might leave it there and I'm gonna follow up with some, I'll, I'll post some little scripts and stuff. Um, little morsels that use this kind of zippers concept and we'll see what uh see what that turns into in the future but yeah we'll make some sounds um but for now thanks for coming thanks for sticking around and uh i'll be back in two weeks two 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 weeks um but yeah thank you all have a great afternoon <laughs>